Good morning, Come and Alive. It's Tuesday, May 3rd. I'm Adam. And I'm Edwin. And, and here are your morning announcements. Pride Guide is a national project that is creating resources to help the LGBTQ plus community in schools across Canada. They're looking for queer artists to create pieces for the 2022 Pride Guide. If you're interested, please email Sarah at the email below for more details. The deadline to show interest is this Friday, May 5th. The Math Club execs would like to thank all Math Club members for sharing their insights and knowledge during this year's club's activities. A big thank you to Mr. Whitlock and Mr. Lee for their time and dedication to the club. And thank you to the math department for making possible various math contest opportunities this year. Kiva is having a bake sale on Friday, May 6th. Come buy a delicious baked good in the atrium. All proceeds will go to a charitable organization in our community. Attention to all grade 10s and grade 11s. Are you interested in becoming a link leader next year? Maybe you've picked link in your course selection for next year, or maybe you're just curious about it now. If interested, Link will be holding two information sessions today and Thursday, May 5th at lunch in the gym. For more information, please get in touch with Ms. Lazon. Today at lunch in room 215, Ms. Bingham will be offering a Part B essay literacy test prep for those interested who are running the test on Wednesday. Please remember that masks are required indoors at school. Please do your part to help keep everyone safe. Well, that's, that's all from us today, CB. Now, now here's your sports test. test. What's up, sports fans? I'm Mike. And I'm Sam. And this is your Sports Desk. Last Tuesday, April 26th, our badminton team competed in the NCSSAA Championship Tournament. Every athlete represented CB very well and worked really hard. Our top finishers include Matthew Chen and Brian Liu, who finished in fourth place in boys' doubles. Catherine and Lillian Shan, who finished in second place in girls' doubles. And Ryan Wang, who finished in first place in boys' singles. Congratulations to all competing athletes, and a big congratulations to everyone on the badminton team for such a successful season. Wow, CB teams have been doing really well lately. I wonder if any of the players are thinking of continuing in university. Well, if they are, they better check out our next segment, where we talk to Administrator of Sports Department at Ottawa U. Recently, I got a chance to discuss school sports at a post-secondary level with a U Ottawa Administrator, as well as the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic has had on these sports. Let's go see how it went. My name's Danica Smith. I uh, am the Senior Advisor for Varsity Operations for uh, GG Sports um, in Varsity Athletics. Uh, my central role is working with um, all of the areas of support around a team that is not sports specific. So that would be um, you know, the mental performance, uh, our dietitian, strength and conditioning, medical, uh, logistics, operations, um, and uh, academic support and eligibility. So that's kind of all the, all the things outside of X's and O's basically to support a team. How did you gain interest in this job and what made you want to pursue it? Um, I mean, truthfully, I think I, after my, after grad school, I needed a job and I knew somebody who had a cool job and she was doing just um, logistics and eligibility. So uh, for all the athletes and I said, hey, if you ever leave, I'd love to grab your job. And sure enough, she got hired to manage uh, FISU International for Canada. Right. And as she was leaving, she just said, hey, I think Danica wants this job. So they just gave me a six month contract and that was 12 years ago i guess now so how has COVID affected your job i mean i think it's um affected it's impacted the student athletes centrally uh in a lot of ways whether it is just you know from a uh access to training um strength and conditioning training access to uh sports specific training um, it has impacted, um, I mean, there's a lot of mental health and mental performance. We had to do a big shift towards focusing on that during uh, when everything was really shut down. Um, you know, last year, I would say when everything was really shut down, um, you know, we could only control certain things. So we had to kind of pump up 
support in the those areas that we could, knowing that we wouldn't be able to access uh, training in the same way um, that we would normally do that. So I would say supporting a university career is finite, right? It's not like in professional sports where, you know, you just go until your body breaks down. It's you're going until your degree is done. So there's it, the, the student athletes really know how long they're going to be here for. And it's really tough to miss one full year of developments. Thanks, Danica, for taking the time to do an interview with us, sending it back to the desk. Wow. Hopefully things will be better next year, but it's good to hear that they're keeping things under control, even in a global pandemic. I just hope they have a Yusuke team. Is this another Obscure, Obscure Sport of the Month? The predecessor to horseshoe throwing, Yuk Sky originated in South Africa around 1743 was developed by transfer riders traveling in ox-drawn wagons to do the pins of the yokes of the oxen at a stick planted in the ground and was typically played in teams of four. Each player would get two skies to knock a peg placed 11 to 16 meters away from them. The playing field consists of two pits juxtaposed in opposite directions so that the play could take place in both directions. Each time a team member knocks over the peg, he gets three points. If the peg wasn't knocked out, the team lying closest to the position of the peg scores as many points as they have skies left closer to the peg than their opponent's closest sky. The first team to get exactly 23 points wins the game. If the team gets more than 23 points, they start from zero. Despite these early origins, it only became an organized sport around 1939 when the rules were officially formalized. Ever since then, the game steadily grew in popularity, being played at schools, clubs, at the provincial level, and even at the national level in an annual tournament hosted in Kroonstad. That's it for this week's Obscure Sport of the Month, sending it back to the desk. See, Mike, it looks like fun. That's true, that's true, but I have a feeling it's going to be a bit tough to find a good playing field. And with that, that's all we have from us today, CB. This is your sports desk, signing, signing off. off.